Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. One of the things I like about the channel that I have is that when I get a question, if I have to answer a question for someone and I think it probably has a broad application or interest, I'll make a video on it and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. The part that I got a question about is relatively simple, but things aren't as simple as they appear when you first look at the part. So let's take a look at the part. First, we have a cylinder. Approximately three-eighths of an inch in diameter, approximately an inch long. Simple little piece. But now here we go. Somebody went and put a flat on the end of this thing. So now it's an ellipse. Still no big deal. You cut the ellipse on the end, fine. Cutting the ellipse or cutting the plane, which forms the ellipse, is not a big deal. Cutting it to a precision overall length may be challenging. And then locating any feature on the face of that will certainly pose its own set of challenges. So I'm going to show you how to overcome that. First thing we're going to do is assume that the 30 degree face on the end of this small blank is truly 30 degrees. We have to trust something. So let's trust that that 30 degree face is truly 30 degrees. I want to draw this hopefully large so you can see it. Here's your part in profile. A little out of scale, but you get the idea. 30 degree plane. Now there is only one point in the rotation of this part where that plane is going to be true to your eye. As this part starts to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise vertically, you're going to start to see either the face or the profile of that part. There's only one point in space where that's going to line up, which is advantageous because at that point, this plane on that part is now perpendicular to the view plane or the registration surface that it's sitting on. That works to your advantage. If you were to take pins now and put pins in here, That part will nest against those pins, and as you rotate that part, this slug is going to migrate up into this wedge, and it's going to stay true to the world. That's a good thing to know. That's how mechanically this is going to function. How do you measure how long the part is? Well, if you knew where these pins are, and I'll tell you where the pins are later on, you could come up with a gauge dimension and measure this right here. And like I said, assuming that you know that that 30 degrees is true, you have a pin to measure against and a surface to pull against, which is going to drive it into the registration pocket, and it's going to give you a very accurate overall length on the face of that part. Now here's the good part. Let's draw it again. The feature that you have to put in the end of that part is not true to the center line of the slug. It's perpendicular to the face of the angle. Wonderful. Now it gets really confusing. So let's say, here's your face. Part position in the machine, thusly because you have to come down from above here to put that hole in the end of that blank. Well, if you deburr the end of this, you might have a problem because you can't pick it up. Chances of you picking it up anyway are slim on a good day. So you can use those pins for a purpose. Now I'm going to cheat and I'm going to suppose that the pins that I will do for you are on location. And it takes a little bit of trick, takes a little bit of layout, but if you put the pin, the one isolated pin, at a very specific location, not only is it a stop, it's a tram reference. This is where we want to be with the ultimate feature that we end up with, the drilled hole. So when we make that nest, that particular hole, or that particular pin, is on center with that. Here's your two banking pins. Once that is forced into the nest, 
you can indicate either side of this pin, come up with a zero location, pull the pin, drill the hole. Simple. It's going to be there all day, every day. The other beautiful part of this is if you put an angle block against the bottom here, as you push that angle block this way, it is going to push the pin up because it's going to ride up the incline. As it does, it's going to rotate, it's going to register. This is a very solid method for drilling, working with, locating, or measuring pins that have a cut feature on the end. Let's take a walk out to the mill, make a quick little plate, pins on location, duplicate this part, and pop a hole 30 degrees perpendicular to the end face. Let's go. The setup for the initial 30 degree cut on the end of this part is very simple. V-block floating against the stationary jaw. The movable jaw crushes the part into the V-block. This particular grip setup is a lot stronger than if you had the bridge on top of the V-block and had the V-block setting in there sideways. If I can crush a V-block like this, I will do it every time. 30 degree angle block. Resting on a parallel, simple. You can see as the cutter passes over the top of that part, you're going to end up with a 30 degree face on the end. Let's do it. In order to minimize the feather edge burr, I'm going to cut from front to rear so that the rotation of the cutter cuts into the part and not rolls the burr out. Okay, for sake of reference, the camera is now behind the machine to the left, and you'll see me come at the frame here in a second. Uh, for the initial datum point hole, the initial very first hole that all the other holes are banking from, put it anywhere you want based on your application. I'm putting mine towards the top of the part, which this will be the top, so that I can sweep indicate it without having too much trouble getting to it with my indicator. And from here, I will just lay out the other two holes that go with it. Let's drill and ream some stuff. Zero out your digital, zero out your dials, whatever happens, that is home right there. It's always good to set the height of your table for your longest tool so that you don't have to lose any location moving the table up and down if anything happens to be out of tram. So the top hole is going to become the banking pin for the 30 degree face. It's also going to be the center line of the ellipse on the end of that face, as calculated. Let's see if it works out that way. And there's no reason to go back to zero. If you're on location, start your reaming operation from that hole. Before I pop this fixture into the machine, I think it's probably a good idea that we take a close-up look at the actual mechanics of how this is now going to sit. Imagine this one, two, three block is the base of the vise. So we're coming in from the movable side jaw here. Let's put the part in there at some God knows what angle. As you put the 30 degree block in there, 
Watch it rotate right there. There you go. That's money all day long. Seated, it's up against all three pins, rotated correctly, oriented to the top surface, and this pin right here, trammable on either side, will give you the center of that ellipse. is with the part securely registered against the three pins and pressed up against the stop pin with the angle block and I got to say if you have more than one of these to do set a stop on your vise and rig your plate to secure this without the use of the angle block because in a setup like this gravity is not your friend this pin wants to the part pin wants to fall away from the registration pin really quickly. So if you can secure it some other way, that would be great. If I was doing a bunch of these, I'd have a small toe clamp in here that I could just rotate against the bottom of this and hold it there. But for one off, here we go. Once you've got it in there, using a 250 pin across the top, sweep it for zero on your x-axis. Zero there, zero there. Remember when sweeping a cylinder like this, always go up and down and watch for the needle to bounce. Look for the high spot on the bounce. Keep it there and then look for the low spot on the rotation. Now what do we know at this point? We know at this point that when this indicator is zero, that the contact needle is 125 from the center of that hole because it's a 250 pin. But we can use this to our advantage. Let's pull this pin out of here. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and step slightly off center so I don't go in that hole. Naturally, zero my digital or my dials. And without changing anything, I'm going to come in and I'm going to zero the face of the fixture. Sweep it around, make sure you're on the high side or the low side of the arc. Okay, right now that zero face, I am 125 into the part right now. So whatever the diameter of the part you're doing, subtract 125, you'll be on the edge of the fixture, and then add the value to get to the half of your pin. Let's see if we can make sense of that for you. I'll turn this 90 degrees so you can see it. indicator was just reading zero. I'm going to move the 125 because it was 125 away when I hit here to the center. Make sure you zero out when you do this. I'm going to move 125. Now that ball should end up pretty close to the face of the fixture, which it does. And with the 375 pin, I'm going to move the radius of the pin or half the diameter of that part whatever that part happens to be so this one's going to be another 187 and a half and I'm going to zero again Turn the X back to the zero point. And I'll tell you what, let's change the angle of this indicator. Get it to spin like it's dead. And take a look at where it is. Okay, you can see the tip of the needle is just barely spinning around a very small circle. With any kind of luck, when I bring it down, it's going to be right dead in the center of that ellipse. Looks like money to me, guys. Let's prove it. Let's put a center drill and a drill in the chuck. Pop a hole in the end. Call this one a wrap. Let's do it.
resulting feature. Now you have a minor and a major dimension or radius on an ellipse like this and it is really difficult to locate these any other way. This is a very solid method and like I had mentioned before, if you have multiples to do, put a little stopper block or something down here and secure it with a cap screw. And just rotate it into position with every piece that you have and move the entire fixture. When this is in the machine, this part is going to want to drop out a lot like that and it would help to have three hands at that time. Anyway, I hope that answers some of the questions that I've been receiving, and I hope it answers a very specific question that I've been receiving. Zero. Zero. Now, I cheated when I laid this out, and I made sure that the top pin, the zero, zero pin right here, was at the dimension that was required on the drawing and the dimension on the drawing is 5.50 millimeters so that's how I figured it out and that made it a whole lot easier when it came time to indicate that pin you just saw it during the demonstration this is the drawing it will work uh, this won't work for anything other than this particular setup ideally you could put a milder or a sharper angle in here and seat deeper but then you start getting into trig. So do not use these numbers if your part doesn't look exactly like that. Anyway, that's all I got for you today, guys. I hope you got something out of that. I hope this gives you something to think about. And the whole rotation of a cylinder going vertical to a plane at one point in that rotation, that is a really strong thing to keep in your mental toolbox. So keep it there and pull it out as necessary. Thanks for watching. Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.